So this video will be the ultimate beginner's guide for making your own melodies. And in this video, we're gonna be going over chords, counter melodies, leads, bass lines, and mixing and mastering. Ah, 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 real quick. I'm gonna run an ad real quick. Today, I dropped my Essentials Drum MIDI Kit. So basically what this kit is, is a whole bunch of different MIDI files of different patterns that you can use for your drums. I have 50 patterns for 808s, I have 50 patterns for hi-hats, I have 10 patterns for class, and I have 10 patterns for like open hats and other percussion. So the kit is $30, it's gonna be the first thing in the description, and I actually think that's really worth the value considering you're getting over 100 MIDI files. So yeah, support creatives, and now let's get back to the video. Now, before we go into chords, let's talk about keys and scales really quick. Now, the most common scales are the major scale and the minor scale. All you need to know is major has a more happy sound and minor has a more sad and dark sound. Now for the keys, people do say that different keys are tied to different emotions. Like for instance, a lot of people say that D minor is more associated with darker, sadder moods. But in my personal opinion, I don't think the key matters that much because I've made really smooth blast type beats in D minor and I've made really like spooky, scary, Nardo wick type beats in D minor as well. What I personally think is a little bit more effective is the actual scale that you choose, which is the major or the minor and also the type of chords that you choose to use. Now let's get into the chords. Now for chords, you wanna use sounds like pianos, synths, guitars, and bells. Now you aren't limited to these sounds here, but I have found them to be the most reliable sounds to go to for chords. Now choosing what type of chord you're gonna start with is dependent on the vibe that you wanna go for. So for instance, if I wanted to make a Draco the Ruler type beat, I'd most likely go with a triad, but if I wanted to make a Kalen type beat, I'd most likely go for a seventh or a ninth minor chord because they tend to be a little bit more jazzy. Now a triad is a chord that consists of three different notes that skip every other note in the scale. And a seventh minor chord is the same as the triad, but it has one extra note. So it's four notes skipping every other note in the scale. And then if you wanna make a ninth, add one more. Now for this example, we're gonna use a triad because it is one of the more basic chords that you could use. So now that we got a triad in here, let me show you a couple ways that I like to spice them up so they can be more interesting. So the first one is changing the voicing. Now changing the voicing is when you take the existing notes in the chord, move them up or down a full octave. Now I really like using this trick a lot because you can just take a chord, make a very minor difference to it and it sounds way more different and way more interesting. Now another way to make your chords more interesting is to take the notes that are already in the chord and then layering them up an octave or down an octave to make it more full. And you can even take it a step further and you can change the voicing while you're doing the layering too. All right, so now we know how to make the chords. So let me show you where to put them. So you can put them on the one, the two, the three, and the four, but that can get kind of boring after a while. So you can place them right here and then also right here just to get different grooves. Now that we know where to place the chords to get the grooves that we want, let me show you where to place them to get the sounds that we want. Now I usually like starting on wherever the root note is. So as you can see, we're in A minor right now. So I'm gonna take the chord and build it off from there. Now you don't have to start on the root note, but I always find it easier because it's just one less thing to think about. Then after that, I like using this spot right here. I also like using this spot right here. Also side note, this is the little pain chord progression that everybody be using the little bum, 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 like that thing. You know I mean, that's the chord progression usually people use. I also like this spot right here and then this spot right here as well. Now, once you have your chord progression down, feel free to mess around with it a little bit after that to make it more unique and interesting to you. Just remember that all these rules are just suggestions. Don't feel like you're confined to any of the rules I'm giving you right now. All right, now it's time to move on to counter melodies. Now with counter melodies, it's kind of hard to teach because there isn't a specific method like how we have with the chords, but here's a couple things to make sure that you can always lay down a counter melody. Now, something that I like to do is use the notes that are in the chords already and basically kind of use it as like a frame or a template on what notes to use for the counter melody. And then I just kind of place down notes wherever I think sounds cool, take some out, add some, move it around, do a whole bunch of weird freaky stuff, you feel me?
Then the second method is to take the actual chords that you have, copy them and paste them up an octave, and then either strum them or arpeggiate them. Now I like this method because if the notes work within the chords, that means they're gonna be able to work when you make them for the counter melody. You know what I mean? Like these chords are proof that these notes are working together. So you just throw them up an octave, mess around with them, move them around, and there you go. You got your own little counter melody. Now let's get on to the synth leads. Now for synth leads, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. You can either have the synth lead that kind of just pops up here and there throughout the whole melody, or you can have the synth lead that is very consistent and constant throughout the whole melody. Here's an example of the pop-up one. And here's an example of the more constant one. Now here's a couple tips that I use to make my synth leads better. Now I'll usually just start out with one note and slide it to the right a little bit. Then I'll put a shorter note right under it. Now what this does is create a gliding effect from the bottom note to the top note and it makes it sound like you actually played the lead. I should probably be looking <laughs> right here when I say that. <laughs> okay. And then when I place the other notes for the synth leads, I make sure to overlap the notes because it creates that gliding effect and it sounds really, really good when it's going throughout the melody. And lastly, I believe that a call and response type of technique is really golden for synth leads. Now, I don't really know what the actual terminology is for this kind of like technique thing, but we're just gonna call it call and response just to make everything easier. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start a melody like this right here and then you're gonna have some silence and leave some space right here. And then you're gonna complete the melody on the other side. Now, just like the counter melody section, there isn't a clear cut method where you can just kinda make stuff without thinking about it, like how the chords are. So just take the rules from the counter melody and apply them for the synth lead melodies as well. Time for the bass lines. Now for the bass lines, I like to stick with the root note or other notes that are within the chord for that section. Now for instance, the root note for this chord is A because it's the lowest note in the chord. So I'm gonna put the bass note on there, but to create some groove, I'm going to make a pattern at the end where it transitions into the next chord and it'll be kind of saucy. Now when I made that little pattern right there, I was on the root note, but I went off into another note that's within the chord. So it's always gonna sound good, maybe like nine times out of 10. You know what I mean? There's no absolutes in music. Now you aren't limited to that rule. If you feel like a bass note for your beat sounds better right here or right here, feel free to do that. You know what I mean? All these rules I'm giving you are suggestions. Don't take them as fact. Oh, also side note for bass lines, the call and response technique is crazy for bass lines. It makes everything way groovier. Now the last topic for the day is mixing and mastering. So if you feel like there's something wrong with your mix, here's some things that you could do to help improve it. Now EQ is essential to having clean mixes. You can literally solve 80% of your problems within your mix just with EQ. Also, turning things down in the mix is super valuable. Now, I feel like a lot of us kind of get scared to turn things down because we've all been conditioned to think that like loud mixes are good. And although they are, sometimes turning individual sounds down will help improve the quality of the mix. 
Now panning really helps when it comes to mixing as well because sometimes when everything is just focused in the middle, it gets really cluttered and it sounds bad. So taking some of the sounds and panning them to the right and taking some of the sounds and panning them to the left can create a lot of space in the mix and you can hear everything way more clearly. Now this is the issue that I had as well. It's using less effects. Sometimes we'll drown things in reverb, sometimes we'll drown things in delay and it will just make a whole lot of things feel cluttered in the mix. So lately I've been trying to reduce the amount of reverb, delay and any other effects that I have on my sounds because sometimes less is more. Now let's get on to the mastering. Now for mastering, I don't have a clear set method. I just do whatever I need to do to make the loop sound how I want it to sound. So for instance, sometimes I'll use Ozone and I'll use the mastering assistant program on there. Sometimes I'll use presets from Slate Digital. Uh, sometimes I'll just take a fruity limiter and put it on the master and then turn everything up. And then sometimes I just do nothing. But I will say, I usually like to have my melodies hitting within that negative nine dB to negative six dB range. And that's without the bass. Now, if I throw the bass in there and I'm doing like a melody with like a bass line or something like that, it can hit zero. But if I mute the bass line, then the melody should be hitting within that negative nine to negative six range. So that concludes the video. And if there's anything that you want me to go over, please leave it in the comments and I'll make a part two to this video and we'll just go crazy with it. This can be a new series, you feel me? So if you like the video, hit the like. If you want to comment, throw a comment. If you want to sub, hit the sub. My name is Devin. I'll just go by Infinite. Pop by Infinite and peace out.